Daniel from the scriptures is one of the most, if not the most favored man in the Bible. From having his homeland pillaged, him witnessing the brutal death of his own kinsmen, and him and the remnants taken into captivity, to him rising not through the ranks, but right past them to becoming one of the chief rulers and governors of the province of Babylon. For not one, but two superpowers, Babylon and Persia, across five different kings. Yet this favor is often considered unmerited. In many, many instances, like Daniel's story, for example, are we told of people who have had good things coming their way, and because it is seemingly undeserving to them, we call that favor. Yet, favor in many biblical examples is not without merit. It's just that that merit is often ignored. And today, in the third episode of Portage Stories, we will look at what is on the surface an oxymoron. We will look at the merit of favor. Daniel clearly had his share of suffering. It is not enough that he lost his home or have survivors guilt for being one of the chosen upper class to serve in the king's chambers, while everyone else was either killed, captured, or enslaved. But the fact that more so he was witnessing what seemed like an end, an end to a promise, a promise of independence, a promise of the coming king, the end of a covenant. The fact that to any sane man the fall of Israel to Babylon would be a sign that God indeed has departed makes the decisions Daniel made, the decisions not to defile himself, not to participate in idolatry, not to engage in Babylonian customs, even at death's door, all the more weightier, illogical even, and it emphasizes how much faith, even in a young age, Daniel had. So is faith the merit of favor? No. I wouldn't say it is. I would say faith is a prerequisite to the merit of favor. I say this because I believe the merit of favor is obedience. And not just any obedience, but obedience to God, especially when you have no reason to. And so the reason why faith is a prerequisite to such obedience is because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Daniel had no reason to eat the king's choice food, survive on water and vegetables, and risk being beheaded. You put any modern Christian in his shoes, and they quickly whip up the verse that says, Not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. And then go ahead to sink in gluttony and eat food that is offered to idols. Granted, we live in a new covenant where food really doesn't matter until it risks a fellow Christian falling and people like Paul have to forego certain meals. But would you obey such a simple command if it meant you losing your head in 10 days? Daniel had no reason to avoid prayer for a month just because the king said so. Most Christians nowadays don't even need a king to tell them not to pray. If school didn't teach either the Lord's Prayer or how to pray for our meals, some of us would have last prayed when COVID struck. And that's three years ago, by the way. Yet despite the decree, Daniel went up to his room and prayed, as was his custom. Daniel had no reason to tell the king his dream and the meaning behind the dream. It was the corrupt wise men that were at risk of dying, not him. God didn't even need to reveal the dream or its meaning until Daniel prayed to him. He had no reason to reveal the writing on the wall. The promise of gold and provincial governorship was not his goal to begin with. Yet out of unnecessary obedience, not to the king, but to the king of kings, did Daniel fulfill all these things. And he not only gained favor for his promotion, but favor to sustain his promotion. We constantly pray to God for favor. We believe in so many instances that maybe in the same way God's grace is unmerited, so is his favor. And we might be right. Actually, maybe the reason why we think favor does not have a cause behind it is because the obedience required to obtain that favor was one that really also did not have any cause behind it as well. It would be logical to just not do it instead. If Joseph did not submit or obey through Potiphar and jail, he wouldn't acquire what was necessary to sustain the blessing that was up ahead. Similarly, if Daniel did not obey, even when he didn't really need to, he would have missed out on the one chance to influence nations as God's instrument.
So, as you pray, my fellow King Christian, don't just pray for favor, but for the grace to submit on your way to that favor, to obey when they seemingly no need to, and to acquire what is the merit of favor. God bless you.